Hello everyone. Hello, hello. This is Shreyas here, your master teacher for physics at Vedantu, going live to the very special session. And let me know, guys, if you can hear me loud and clear, let me know in the chat box. Hello, my warriors. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Can you hear me loud and clear? Let me know in the chat box. Welcome, welcome, all my warriors. Hello. Purna, hello Vishal, hello Ninad, hello Achyut, hello Amit, hello Shreyas Kapri, Aditi, Minyan Aarti, welcome aboard. Today is a very special session for all of you and you know this was a session which was there in my head from a very long time and I always wanted to do this for all of you because you know this is a very different age we live in, the times are changing and you will see that so many myths will be bursted today. You will get to know so many different things. In fact, when I was interacting with, uh, you know, Dr. Vinit Joshi, who is the leading ophthalmologist in, at, um, you know, LV Prasad Institute, I got to know so many things, which, uh, you know, uh, probably um, I would never have known if I had not conducted this session. And I'm pretty sure you two guys will be surprised to know these many things uh, out here today. So those of you who do not know me, I'm Shreyas your master teacher for physics and I not only teach on the YouTube channel but I also conduct my regular sessions on the paid platform as well. And if you want to know more about me, you can definitely follow me on my Instagram handle that's Shreyas underscore Vedantu. So having said this, I would like to also touch upon a few more things because I know a lot of you out here are facing difficulties in their studies on aspects like how to manage time, how do I cover my portions, there are a lot of uncertainties out there. A lot of people are confused. How do I crack my board examinations? How do I work for boards plus J plus need? Are there uh, ways in which you know I can prepare for KVPY exam and other examinations? Is there a way I can get all the study material? Is there a way all my doubts will be answered? So guys, don't worry. Vedantu always listens to all the students' queries, worries, everything. We have a very systematic study plan for all of you with a regular long-term batch where even teachers like me, Shimon sir, Vazim sir are teaching. In fact, you get a variety of choices of your favorite teachers. You can choose amongst all your favorite teachers. You get all uh, uh, the classes uh, for J, NEET, KVPY, all under one roof. So you don't have to run around to different coaching classes for getting into uh, you know all these colleges or cracking all these entrance examinations it also comes with test series you also get doubt solving facility from morning till night so anytime you have doubts you can always get all your doubts resolved with our doubt experts and believe me there is a batch for hindi as well as english separately which i think is a very unique thing because you know the choice the, uh, the choice of language is very important. That's when you can learn very effectively. So all of this is at a very affordable price and you can find it, uh, find the link for joining all these courses in the description box below, all right? And you will see that these prices are really, really affordable. It's hardly one, one fifth, one sixth of the prices that you would probably get in the market. So the coupon code for joining the crash course is SHCC and you can join the coupon, uh, join the crash course immediately because the course is starting on 10th of May. So do not delay and you will get a discount of 40%. All right. So having said that, let's begin. So first of all, before we start and I call upon our guest for today, who is a doctor, I want the screen to be filled up with lots and lots of hearts. And there we have Dr. Vinit Joshi from LV Prasad Eye Institute is the leading eye institute in our country. It's actually the number one. In fact, they do lots of eye operations for free. And he, he is a leading, Dr. Vinay Joshi is a leading ophthalmologist. And you know, he has uh, done lots and lots of operations. If you hear the number of operations he does per day, you will be surprised. It's definitely going to be more than the number of problems you solve per day. And <clears throat> he operates on cornea and 
lot of other things he is going to talk about whatever he does also he is very very deeply involved in artificial intelligence machine learning and you know a uh, predicting the disease just by looking at the photographs so guys fill the chat box with all the hearts all the love that you can give come on guys put it up in the chat box and welcome dr vinit joshi welcome now the mic is on to you and you can start hey shes am i audible is it clear yes you are audible yes you are audible hey thanks for uh, such a generous introduction <laughs> and uh, hey guys uh, very nice to meet all of you and uh, i would say it is my first interaction with um, uh, you guys and very very i would like to thank uh, ray sir over here who has given me this opportunity to interact with you guys and uh, you know i'll tell you how this uh, idea of having this session came up is is when we were having a casual conversation about how the trends of patients are changing nowadays and i told him you know what i am seeing a lot of kids you don't you teach uh, a lot of students who are uh, you know training for entrance exams you know i'm seeing a lot of these kids coming to my clinic uh, i had never seen them probably a year back and suddenly um, they along with their parents are flooding our gates so um, the reason is that there there is an entity which is which has been quite uh, i would say significantly been ignored in the past few years but now it has become a uh, very important suddenly because of the lockdown and the boom in digital education so what we are going to do is and what shreyasar wanted me to bring about is a very important point of view for all of you is that when you study uh using any form of digital screen let it be laptops let it be um uh, your mobile phones tablets or even if you're watching televisions it's finally a digital screen it's a tft led lcd whatever screen and uh, it is made up of some form uh, some kind of pixels and there are some problems when you overexpose your system now what is the problem you would say if i overexpose my system to technology these technologies have been rendered safe in first place for everyone's use that is why they are in the market but then there is a limit right everything has a limit so what i am showing you on this slide is basically how we have evolved from those ages uh, from i i would say as an ape to uh, to a human being now but what i want to highlight is the first four stages have taken a very long time to happen and during this period of time our body has got sufficient time to make those changes to adapt to the uh, i would say changes happening in our surrounding now if you see the last three the last three uh, images show a very rapid uh, surge or i would say um, uh, rapid evolution that has occurred especially in technology but in that period of time our body has not evolved that much to adjust to that much of an technological exposure as you can see here we are getting glued to digital screens not much to say that it usually starts as a casual let me see who has sent me a message on whatsapp and then it goes on to something like this where you are staring at your phones at night when you are lying in the bed working too much on computer screens trying to finish your you assignments in fact pressures, uh, ask them how much how many hours do these kids spend on the computer screens guys can you just put up a number out there on the chat box how many hours do you spend on the screen per day approximately and uh, dr vinit joshi can you probably tell us also like what do you think uh, is the time yes. uh, on an average people spend on the computer screen oh yes very important question so um i'm pretty sure all of you must be spending more than 4 to 5 hours on screen time i'm not just talking about laptop i'm talking about all the screens including mobiles including your tablets including the tv time so if you include all these definitely anyone nowadays is actually uh, being exposed more than 4 to 5 hours now the problem comes is 
there is a disease which has been defined as computer vision syndrome okay it's called as cvs in our field or computer vision syndrome you can call it it's simple to remember it is defined as over exposure to the screen more than 2 to 3 hours a day come on so that means everyone is a kind of a candidate for this disease right so these definitions are made back in 2010 and with the digital boom happening in the last 10 years yes we have got a quite a lot of screens which are uh, good to use uh, and safe for the eyes but there is a limit and that limit is the biological limit of our eyes and that is what i want to highlight here what exactly happens when you are over exposed to the screen now our eyes are exactly like this camera it has got a glass in front which is print it has got a focusing mechanism it has got muscles to focus like this it has got a very sturdy structure uh, which can maintain this optical pathway and then it has got at back a very fine film photosensitive film or you can say a digital film which is able to convert whatever you have captured into a digital image and that here it is stored on a memory card in our eyes it is sent as uh, electric impulses to our brain so it is our eyes exactly function like this camera now imagine you have to use this camera 8 to 10 hours in a day continuously in that one position holding like this tell me where where everywhere the pains will start in the body your hands your neck your back your back of the head these are the exact places where you will start experiencing pain when you are over exposing yourself or your eyes to screens so why computer like devices are the culprit so when we look at distance our eyes are primarily made to look at distance they have been evolved in such a way that uh, you know people back in medieval ages used to dwell on hunting or seeing it if the enemy is coming from far which is why distance vision was a big landmark but now with the digital boom computer screen then mobile phones an aspect of intermediate vision which is the distance of 60 to 75 cm from the eye has become very important but our eyes have not adapted to that kind of use as of yet so what happens is uh in order to focus an object which is a little bit closer than farther our there there is a lens inside the eye a natural lens which is gifted to us by nature this lens is capable of contracting and kind of dilating okay so in order to focus on an object near the lens contracts now contract this there are some muscles in the eye which are constantly functioning like an autofocus camera now because we are constantly using computer screens and if say you use for more than 2 to 3 hours a day at a stretch these muscles get locked and the lens also gets locked so what will happen at this point you won't be able to your vision will get fixed at this particular distance of 60 75 cm you won't be able to see something further which adds to a lot of problem which adds to all the symptoms of headache um a pain over here at the sides of the skull back side of the head the top of the head will pain the neck will start hurting another thing that will happen is when you are so engrossed in looking at a computer screen you will not blink now naturally we blink up 14 to 18 times or 16 to 20 times per minute but i have actually counted my patients who are engrossed in their mobile phones they blink they do not blink more than 2 to 3 times a minute yeah, right. 6 to 8 times is a rough ballpark figure but 2 to 3 times a minute is very less this causes now that you are telling me this in fact i am counting my blink rate and i am just realizing <laughs> guys that my blink rate is actually very less just looking at the screen and i just don't realize you know my blink rate has actually gone down yes so this happens very um, i would say in a subconsciously this is a natural response so the problem with decrease in blink rate is our eyes are covered with a very natural tear film and this tears um, apart from having use in emotional movies and tv films it is actually of very very uh, i would say uh, 
important use in survivability of the eye or i would say the front part of the eye because it is the tear film which keeps the eye wet it has to be so that the surface remains smooth now if you want to blink if you will blink just two to three times a minute this tear film is going to dry out once this dry out dry spots start appearing on the surface and this leads to a kind of friction so whenever your lids will bring a uh, blink this time it will cause friction friction leads to burning sensation or redness in the eyes and this is like a cycle every friction causing blink will induce more inflammation which induces more burning and then you will tend to blink even more in dry eye state so it keeps on happening again and again and again now in computer vision syndrome you will have all these things you will have a very deep seated eye strain you will have headache you will have redness watering in the eyes and neck and back aches sometimes when the vision gets fixed to a, a particular distance you will not be able to see at distance and you will start having double vision so that happens when probably you are sitting for more than 8 or 10 hours non stop at a stretch to finish an assignment and uh, this leads to temporary near sightedness also what it does is if you have noticed you know i used to get a lot of patients saying like uh, doctor my eyes have become small i have to tell them that you know in in no disease in the world if the eye is normal the eye becomes small by itself it is just that we squeeze it because we are not able to tolerate the light that is coming in front of us that is called as photophobia decreased tolerance to light and that happens in this computer vision syndrome and if you will really give a thought and you know retrospectively ask yourself how many of these problems have you faced over the past one year i'm pretty sure out of these eight you must have faced more than four now what are the causes if i should tell you that a proper posture is a very important component of computer vision syndrome you will be surprised because as you can see here sleep studying online in this position is very harmful and studying in these all positions is also very harmful primary reason being that the level of your eyes should always be 20 degrees above the screen it should never go below the screen that should not happen there are two reasons for it it causes more stress on the muscles of the eye and second reason is that your eyelids tend to be open for a long time and causes more amount of dryness another important reason why posture is important is it adds a lot of strain to all the supporting mechanisms and then it is going to aggravate your computer vision syndrome the best position is will i'll describe to you later how many of you now just change the positions please let me know in the chat box because i was one i was like thinking was i one of those three wrong guys out there let me know guys how many of you were just just realize that when you watch my lectures out there on youtube or when you are just watching any of the online lectures you just did you realize that many of you are wrong and probably the posture very important pointers is, told by dr vinay joshi that you know posture plays an important role for taking care of eyes and that's probably one of the reasons why your eyes are getting screwed up over to you dr joshi thanks ren sir another very important is the quality of your screen now the previous screen used to be glass screen and they caused a lot of reflections as you can see here this is typically glare and if you have a window behind that is a very wrong setting to use your computer screen or any form of screen so ideal location of your window should be towards the side and you should have specific types of screen which i will describe in further slides uncorrected glass power now why this is important is that many of you must have had tested your eyes before and you must have noticed that you had some amount of small amount of glass power but you never wore your glasses now to all those people if you are going to sit for more than 4 to 5 hours a day your problems and your uh, defective vision is going to get amplified because there is going to be an excess burden on the focusing mechanism so in such situation it is very important to first go and get your glass powers checked with a doctor and why i am telling you all this is re recent studies in uk have shown that 
increased screen time in children is actually an important problem and it ha uh, they are speculating that it causes changes in the circadian rhythm that is the normal uh, day night cycle uh, in the body and it can lead to something called as adhd which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or even obesity in children and it can cause uh, increased short sightedness which is basically uh, having a minus number for glasses that's very insightful i mean uh, the way we live today i mean today's session is not just for mm -hmm. you know all the kids out there who are trying to learn online but it's also to all the parents and all the probably elder brothers and sisters of you guys out there who are probably working in any companies and you ask any of your parents your uncles your aunts and they will tell you those of you who are going for work it's no different guys i mean you might you might say that you know oh uh, uh, sir just because of covid you know i am spending more time uh, on the screen but i don't feel so because come on honestly tell me if it was not for covid and if it was not for online learning uh, what would you be doing i mean even then even if you're not attending an online class your uh, eyes would be focused glued on some movie on netflix on some games on whatsapp and instagram and god knows what so understand today's session is not just for online learning and these insights are probably going to help you uh, you know relieve your stress on your eyes and uh, try to give you preventive measures before it's too late because uh, no matter what you say all right you cannot avoid the truth you have to spend a lot of time in front of the screen you cannot get rid of that fact and that's the uh, you know life we uh, live that's the times we live in uh, do you guys agree let me know in the chat box and thank you thank you dr jurushi for telling me this and telling all of us so much about you know how the eye works and how uh, different kinds of syndromes are caused now actually i have a question a lot of questions for you and one of the common myth is that you know i especially when i was a kid i used to get scolded a lot don't watch too much of tv you are going to get spectacles and <laughs> i hear this a lot of times uh, for others as well uh, is it really true like watching too much of tv or mobile screens can give you specs your number will increase and your glass power will increase is it true well spot on yes, sir <laughs> i i am actually asked this question so many times in uh, in the clinic so first of all let me tell you that watching television is not going to uh, basically uh, watching television is not going to cause you to use spectacles the problem is that when you watch too much of television you don't tend to go outside and play during the day you tend to become more of an introvert or rather you stay indoors during the day time now it is scientifically proven that children who are more engaged in outdoor activities during the day that falls in your day night cycle or circadian rhythm this promotes a proper eye health and that is where a good number of children do not acquire a glass power or spectacle so i would say yes and no both it's not directly related to you know uh, le leading to spectacles but it is the overuse of this habit that can cause this problem <laughs> oh that's that's crazy that's crazy so both good and bad news out there so not really a time to rejoice so keep that in mind guys guys i know a lot of you are asking a lot of queries we are going to come to q and a session very soon as soon as i finish my bit uh, my part of questions and i am pretty sure many of the questions that you guys are asking i have already planned guys i know you well you are my kids i know you guys very well what kind of questions my warriors are going to ask so don't worry i have already planned all that for you yes so oh by the way in case you have forgotten to smash that like button down there go ahead hit that like button come on i want to see some likes coming out there and uh, yeah in case some of the users are are new to this channel do not forget to hit the subscribe button down there because without your love and support uh, you know 
I wouldn't have the motivation to conduct more sessions. So come on, show your love and support. That's the fees for attending today's session. Now, having said uh, and talked about, uh, you know, whether watching TV uh, causes uh, power and all that, uh, there is one common question that I get and I would like to ask Dr. Vineet Joshi. Is blue light, which comes from the TV screens, harmful? And is it true that can I use those blue light filters? Will those blue light filters, those goggles, those shades actually cause any difference? Excellent question, Shres. I think you have been doing a lot of research. So um, I just have the answer for you. Yes, blue light is harmful. Uh, the blue light coming from screens has been shown to, again, uh, it affects a particular hormone called melatonin, which is important for the natural sleep cycle. Uh, but you need to understand uh, what uh, uh, that this... Uh, blue light problem can be controlled by sleeping on time. So basically, it's about your habit and your choice. It's not that I should use blue filter glasses and then continue watching computer screen. That is a wrong habit. So I would say that no, don't go for blue light filtering lenses. But yes, blue light does cause a problem and you should limit its exposure. Nowadays, the screens, they are coming with uh, technologies by which it minimizes the blue light emission. And also, there are some protective screen guards, which I will cover in the next few slides. Um, apart from that, you can also adjust the screen setting. But what I would really recommend is to be disciplined and restrict the screen time by yourself. Sleep on time. <laughs> oh. That's that's a myth which is just bursted by Dr. Vinit Joshi. So guys, I hope you guys are noting it down. Lot of insights, trust me. Trust me, you are not going to get all of this uh, again and again. Yeah, please write it down. A lot of myths bursted. So just don't listen to random rumors out there. Just because somebody out there is going to wear some blue goggles, please don't start wearing those blue goggles unless it is proven otherwise by science. In fact, now I want to in fact ask, uh, is there a way to prevent the stress which is caused on eyes uh, due to the uh, screen time that we have? Is there a way to avoid the computer vision syndrome? Can we avoid this some way? Yes, 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 sir. We can definitely avoid it. And there are some ways by which you can tackle this computer vision syndrome. And as you clearly mentioned before, we cannot run away from exposure to screens. That is our present and that is going to be our future. We have to learn to live with it, but live it in a proper way. So correct posture. I, this is the slide. You can take screenshots, you can take photographs, but this is how you should sit in front of your desk. Notice all those angles screen exactly 20 degrees below your eyesight level. The distance between the screen and uh, these, uh, your eyes, it should be somewhere around, um, they say around an arm's length. So your arm's length should be the distance. That's easy to remember rather than to counting it in inches and centimeters. Another thing is, I, as you can see here, the arms should be rested on a handle. That is very important. Sit straight, spine should be erect. And the head is should be such that uh, the line of ears should be with your line of shoulders. That means that you shouldn't kind of uh, bend down or stoop too much. Uh, you should sit erect. And uh, the feet should be touching the ground. The moment you lift your feet, it's going to put pressure on your spine and back. So feet should be touching the ground in those angles. This is the correct position to sit in. And trust me, if you sit in this position, you're going to correct almost 40 to 50% of computer vision syndrome. Now, this is a 20-20-20 rule. You, so this is very commonly, I uh, we tell to our patients to follow this rule. What does it mean? So whenever you're sitting on a screen for a long time, every 20 minutes, look at something which is 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Now, you cannot measure 20 feet, but at least look at something which is at a distance for 20 seconds. Try to look at it continuously and focus there. Why this is important is the reason I mentioned you earlier is that your lens gets fixed 
at near object you need to break that fixation you need to constantly keep the lens moving so that you don't get locked in a particular position okay blink 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 this is the mantra keep blinking put these stickers on your screen everywhere and remember whenever you click the mouse you should blink so blinking often is very important during your any computer vision screen ex uh, exposure uh, this helps in spreading of the tear film equivalently all over the uh, surface of the eye and it will prevent dry eye formation these are the things which i wanted you to see so there are certain matte screen filters available online you can use them they are very good also there are so wherever you set your screen settings now you would uh, we wouldn't know that first you should always set your contrast usually somewhere between 60 to 70 the idea of contrast is to make sure that your letters or words that are there in a lighter background they get lifted from behind now they if this lifting is very important so the contrast should not be zero it should be somewhere between 60 to 70 but not excessive also anything excess is is a problematic once you have set a contrast then you turn to brightness and brightness should be such that again you don't get locked in particular brightness it should be such that you grade uh, increase in graded way usually around 50 to 60 based on the type of screen um, but you should be able to notice the difference in different bright screens so always go a step further then come back and then select that particular brightness mode there are certain softwares available online Nowadays, the newer monitors and desktops, they have these inbuilt, uh, uh, I, I would say, options where you can change the setting for night, reading, and other modes. Uh, but you can do that simultaneously using uh, certain softwares like the one I have mentioned here uh, that can help you to adjust your screen as per your requirements. And this, these settings are very useful to decrease the strain. Okay. So, uh, that's... Yes. That's I, very important, guys. These last few slides... Please make a note of it, the brightness settings, the posture, the angles. I was just reading all your comments. Many of you just realized you guys were sitting in the wrong way. And yeah, make it a habit, guys. Keep it, take a printout or stick it, uh, write it in your, uh, by your hand only, stick it on your walls so that it becomes a habit. And guys, you remember my rule, three weeks. So once you follow something for three weeks, it becomes a habit. So make it a habit, trust me, because you are going to be related to me our relationship with this channel, with VNTUs, with me, is there for a long time. You're not just here for one day. You're going to be there with me for two years, one year, all right, till you clear all your entrance examinations. So I don't want you to develop any kind of syndromes like this. So please make sure you develop these habits. Having said this, also, you know, what if some of the kids were saying, you know, Nirmal, I heard that, sir, I think it's too late for me. Or oh, somebody was saying, oh, I think I already am facing some of these issues. So what if I'm already facing with one of these issues? Uh, am I too late? Should I visit a doctor? What should I do? Oh, yes. Very important. You should visit a doctor. And I think the first visit when you're having this problem is very important. This visit is important in a way. Why? Because a doctor will examine your eye power at the fullest with all the possible examination methods. It will take around an hour. But that is very important. This is because that you might have an existing glass power, but for an extended use for computer screens, we might have to adjust your glass power to that, that particular distance. And to do that, you need to see your doctor and get these minor differences corrected out first. If there is a need of any anti-reflective coating, we can prescribe you that. Or a tint that is required to the glasses, we can add that for you and prescribe you in the first visit itself so that you start to this treatment is very good. Second, very important, and these things really help, is to use artificial teardrops. Now, an eye doctor will give this to you. These are also available off the shelf in any of the pharmacy. And these lubricant drops are very soothing, and they will uh, keep the eyes moist. They don't allow dry eye, and also help that you blink often. And they keep the surface very regular. These Artificial tears are uh, actually, uh, I would say, the treatment of choice for computer vision syndrome in most of the patients that come to our clinic. Finally, these 
these are the real mantras which i tell my patients who come now if you're looking at me there are two types of eye exercises which i tell to my patients and these are primarily to increase the blood supply to the structures surrounding the eye one is to tightly squeeze your eyes and then suddenly open them suddenly open them very wide what this does is it suddenly increases the blood supply to all the surrounding structures of the eye including muscles and soft tissue and that is very important to release the toxins and release the spasms it will really help you in the long run second exercise is that uh, first look straight and then look to eight directions eight extreme directions like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 every direction should you should feel the stretch in your eyes it should be that extreme do that in that along with the 20 20 20 rule and you will notice the difference the reason is same it increases the blood supply now uh if you do all these things you will be definitely preventing computer vision syndrome okay crazy i was just trying this out guys i mean these things are very simple are you noticing it i mean it's not like you need to do something really crazy out of the way these exercises are very simple you know i'm going to probably remind you uh, during my classes are you guys following these things or not uh, and coming to the next point uh, you know my favorite topic actually food so uh, all of you know that i love eating during my classes and we all love, so uh, let me also tell you that we often share what we are eating during our classes and um, let's talk about healthy food what is the nutritious food what is that thing which i should take so that my eyes remain healthy i want my eye power to remain good i don't want to develop any eye infection what's the food that i should eat doctor thanks for asking see eyes is all about color so all colorful fruits and vegetables they are actually good for eyes primarily because they have the beta carotene which is a form of vitamin a and these are very useful all the fruits that you are seeing here yes including mangoes they are good for your eyes leafy greens again colorful but for different reasons uh, it is filled with useful uh, ingredients like lutein and zeaxanthin these are very important for the health of certain cells in your retina or photoreceptor cells which kind of convert any light into electrical impulse in the eye these are like your photo transmitting diodes so they are very important legumes or pulses kidney beans black eyed beans these i know most many of you might not be liking this but trust me they are really useful they contain zinc and bioflavonoids these are again useful for certain layers of the retina which, which is the photo layer of the eye nuts different nuts they contain omega 3 fatty acids these are very important and vitamin e that boosts all forms of uh, epithelial layers inside the eye these omega 3 fatty acids they are useful again in another layers of retina in uh, in the transparent gel like layer in the lens and even in the front surface that is the cornea where i specialize in citrus fruits especially amla extremely healthy for the eyes you should definitely uh, try you know have this quite frequently this is the season for all these fruits oranges grapefruits lemons they are all good for the eyes if you are into uh, if you are non vegetarian yes fish is a very rich source of omega 3 fatty acids and uh, even egg the egg white contains rich sources of lutein and vitamin a now i will also cover certain points which are uh, certain habits that you should follow considering yes. the importance of time because uh, i want you all to give a chance to ask me questions directly always sleep in a dark room don't keep any night light or any form of light on and sleep sleeping in the dark room is very essential because it again boosts your day night cycle or the circadian rhythm so you know the body is all about cycles physiology if you are in harmony of nature nature keeps you sound in health so remember that when it is night just shut down your lights and sleep off and wake up early before the sunrise these things are very useful for vision if you are into ayurveda i would recommend to watch the video from fittuber about how uh, he mentions certain simple uh, ingredients and uh, ayurvedic medicines which are good for vision and certain asanas 
So, uh, although he's, they, uh, Ayurveda claims that they can get rid of glasses in five steps, but it's not scientifically proven. Uh, yes, there are benefits, but uh, they, they are variable and reversible. But Ayurveda plays a huge role in keeping a holistic approach or rather keeping the eye vision health, as Sir was mentioning, at uh, its top uh, state of function and productivity. So, if you can see down there, there are certain photos of pressing uh, foot reflexology points of pressing that point. That is the point of optic nerve, which if you are going to give proper pressure every evening before you sleep, it's good for your uh, 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 eyes. And uh, yes. Yes, so actually, before we go ahead, uh, I mean, uh, guys, you are go just going to get a free consultation now. All right, <laughs> oh, and for a small amount of time, no fees asked. But a lot of you obviously want uh, to get in touch uh, with Dr. Vinay Joshi for various problems that you might encounter. Hopefully, you do not encounter, but let's say in case. So, is there any way all my kids, all the people watching out here, can actually get in touch with you? And come on, it's a digital revolution. So, can we actually get in touch with you online? Yes, you guys, you're seeing the answer on the screen. So uh, we at LV Prasad Institute, we have actually started this uh, digital um, teleconsultation where you can download this app, Connect Care, uh, on Google Play or Apple, Apple Store, and you can book an appointment with any of our doctor. And we are available on certain days of the week, and we will directly have a video call with you or an audio call. You can send us the images of your eye, or you can directly talk to us regarding the problems, and we will prescribe you medicines directly. We are actually introducing newer modules by which you will be able to click a very good photograph of your eye using your own smartphone. These all technologies are coming very soon. So, uh, I would like to end my talk here and thank all of you. And I'm open to all the questions. Uh, are any that you would? Okay, so basically, uh, some of them are asking: uh, Is the consultation for free? So, guys, I I think <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's very minimal cost and charges, but you can always tell Shreya's name and connect with me directly for free. No issues. <laughs> yeah. So, you can use my coupon code SHCC, okay? Yeah. Anyways, so uh, some of the actually uh, were asking very beautiful questions. And uh, now we have a small, narrow window of time where we can consult our doctor and you can get all your questions answered. So, a lot of them were asking, sir, can I remove my spectacles? Some of them don't like their spectacles. Some of them are, in fact, wondering, uh, doctor, you are, a, I, uh, you are an eye surgeon, and you yourself are wearing spectacles. How is it? You can do some magic. Oh, you know weird. the wiring. You can do some wiring mantras, and you can just get rid of your specs, right? Yes, but I like glasses, unlike you. <laughs> so, <laughs> I wear them. So, uh, so, see... Everyone has their own priorities and so I like using glasses and I prefer using them because in a way they are useful for me when I'm operating. And uh, yes, you can get rid of your glasses. There are various surgeries, laser uh, surgical procedures and also some non-laser surgical procedures by which you can get rid of your glasses. But for that, we need to get checked in the hospital to do certain scans to see if your eyes are fit for those surgeries. And second important thing is that you should be of certain age of 21, 22, by which your body's growth is complete, so that we do not anticipate any natural change in your eye power after the surgery. So your growth and the eye power should be stable. Those are the prerequisites. Oh. Other than that, yes, you can get rid of your glasses. Oh, that's, that's great. But guys, don't have to worry about it now. I mean, you're still studying. You can get yourself operated later on. Now, don't... Uh, play around with your eyes. Now is not a time to get operated. And uh, guys, I always tell this, accept yourself. I mean, a uh, lot of people uh, find it hard to accept. Oh, I got spectacles. Oh, I'm going to get teased in my school. I get all those uh, queries on Instagram as well. So guys, first thing, learn to accept who you are, what it is. Understand, all this is genetic. It's not because of some uh, other reasons. I think Dr. Joshi can also probably add on to that. Is this genetic in a way, getting spectacles? Uh, 
Hello, can you hear me? <coughs> I think we lost the connection a bit. Um, yeah, some technical glitch. I lost question there. Just tell me again. Yeah, yeah. So is but this I, genetic in a way? Yes, eye power and any form of uh, power, it is genetic. And uh, not entirely, it can be sporadic as well that you can acquire it because of your habits. But if corrected in time, uh, it does help. Uh, mostly these are genetic uh, traits. Okay. okay. And is it ad advisable? Some of them are asking, is it advisable to study in the night or in the morning? And how many hours of sleep is needed to you know, keep your eyes healthy? Does sleep also play a role in our eyesight? Seven hours to eight hours of sleep. Seven hours, I would say, now you are studying. But sleep early and get up early in the morning. That's the best thing for your eyes. And, uh, you know, especially waking up in the time period of five, which is just before this, right? Studying in that period of time is very good for vision and for memory. Okay. Okay, guys, remember, sleep early, wake up early, seven hours of sleep. Very important. Try not to study too late in the night, wake up early in the morning. It also improves memory. Some of them were also asking, sir, we just got our blue lenses. We got our blue glasses. What should I do with That's them? Okay. That's okay. That's it's okay. okay. No problem. Continue using them. Uh, there's no problem with that. But also remember to follow all those posture control and other habits which I have mentioned today. Those are equally important. Okay. 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 That's, that's cool. And can you remove spectacles without eye surgery? It's an easy one, I guess. Yeah. Well, uh, there are certain reports of natural regression. There are certain reports of treating with Ayurveda. And there are certain ways of using certain type of contact lenses which can decrease eye power. But for that, the eye glass power has to be less in magnitude. Uh, very high powers usually need surgery. So, yes and no, again, there are various options. But time-tested are the laser surgeries which do fantastically well, which has a very good uh, outcomes uh, uh, in the patients. Most of them are very happy. Okay, okay. So that is possible. That's a small ray of hope for all of us. But don't worry, guys. Uh, like I said, learn to accept yourself. And uh, uh, some of them were also asking, uh, if I have an option to study on mobile or on laptop, should I prefer a laptop screen than a mobile screen? Is it more advisable? Uh, I would say uh, the bigger screen, the better. Primarily because um, the font size, uh, when you're focusing on a very small screen for a very long period of time, can cause a problem. And if, uh, yes, mobile screen fonts are optimized and they are also good. But what happens when using mobiles is we tend to stoop a lot. The posture is not regulated when you are using mobile phones. Mobile phones are used should be less. You should always resort to measures like using a laptop or a desktop is the best uh, if you are using for studies. Um, but don't use these screens while sleeping in the bed and in awkward positions. That's not right. Oh, I'm pretty sure all my students do that. I'm 100% <laughs> confident of this. And some of them are asking uh, that they have some headache and some eye pain. Uh, so guys, we just discussed about it. So the cure, everything was just mentioned. But still, if you are facing, some of them said, sir, I have computer vision syndrome. Uh, the cure was mentioned, but if you still have persistent problems, please remember, you can always get in touch with Dr. Vineet Joshi through the mobile app, which was just mentioned some time back. You can get your online consultation. And if you are in Hyderabad, yes, all the Hyderabadi people out there, you can definitely visit Dr. Vineet Joshi and all the amazing team of doctors out there who can treat you, all right? So don't worry, if you are not in Hyderabad, still there is online consultation available. Yes. So Just tell Shreya's name and come. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. So guys, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of you have a lot of problems. Don't worry, guys. Uh, you can get in touch. I am so glad. I'm so glad this session happened today. I am so thankful to Dr. Vidit Joshi to spare his valuable time. In fact, he was just in a uh, OR just some time back, 
and again he's going to get back into work guys if you uh, listen to his stories you will be truly amazed the amount of uh, work any doctor puts in um, in his daily life i mean first of all i would like to salute all the doctors out there who are our frontline warriors um, in this fight for corona and you know who work tirelessly uh, for all the citizens for all the countrymen out here um, and you know who are dedicating their entire life you know for all of us and it's uh, really uh, you know so many of our uh, students complain sir i can't study sir i mean i can't study more than 3 hours sir i feel lazy i want to watch netflix sir i want to just sleep guys doctors don't have a choice and we need to take inspiration from all of the doctors out here to work really hard because only when you work hard can you actually do something nice in fact i would like to ask dr joshi a very important question since we are talking about working and academics and all that should an engineer not worry about biology should a doctor not think about maths are these subjects related to each other uh, are they not related to each other should we worry about other subjects what do you think excellent question stress and uh, i would say that the current generation of all all of you who are attending today you will definitely face this question in coming few years because i would tell you now that the boundaries between the so called distinct fields of doctor and engineer are collapsed why because the engineers are getting more and more into data sciences health data sciences health informatics health analytics machine learning deep learning and uh, basically bioinformatics and you need expert engineers there who know their core expertise on the other hand uh, in the future a doctor who doesn't know how to use technology or how to guide these people to develop a useful technology for patients is not going to be of use a doctor will have to learn a part of data science so a doctor will have to learn part of biomedical engineering and i see that both these fields are merging especially when the uh, artificial intelligence has become a big boom in healthcare so lot of lot of work is being going on in predicting the diseases even before they happen using simple tests so lot of scope and lot of work is there it's becoming an engineering and doctor is not the end it's probably just a half a step <laughs> of a big journey that's so true i mean i remember during our times i used to just think about oh i like maths i'm going to take engineering oh um, i <laughs> don't like maths or i like biology so i'm going to become a doctor so guys um, it's much life is much beyond that i mean just look at the lab or uh, just behind uh, the doctor <laughs> i mean it's uh, trust me it's full of you were just showing me uh, around some time back it's full of 3d printers uh, he's surrounded by iitians he works with engineers who are iitians and uh, many of them are some of them are computer science engineers some of them are mechanical engineers some of them are you know um, medical graduates some of them are in biotechnology all mixed crowd some of them are graphic designers some of them are artists yes yeah, some of them are from the arts field uh, that's what he was telling me and how do you feel working around with all, um, bi- uh, you know a mix of all these people oh it's great really great so uh, we are actually a team of center for innovation which are basically being focused towards developing newer solutions for i care using the forefront of engineering technology now you mentioned about artists and 3d graphics engineers they are the ones who are converting our educational module into uh, 3d or virtual reality context we have some certain engineers working on virtual reality headsets they they bring our presentations and our educational material that we give them they give them a digital touch they put it on virtual reality platform and then they make it available for students to read they make certain digital books or even animations that can be useful for surgeons to understand and learn rest other people are working as i told you the connect care platform there is a team behind it 
uh, who are developing softwares for that, maintaining those platforms so that we can reach out to maximum people and developing a kind of a, a space where engineers come together with doctors trying to find out innovative solutions, um, developing prototypes and then, uh, you know, probably seeing a hint of future. <laughs> That's so cool, guys. So cool. I mean, really interesting. Guys, this should really motivate all the doctors and the future engineers that, come on, you guys need to really buck up. You need to up your game and work really hard. There is a big, big opportunity, crazy things which await you. By the time you graduate, things are going to be even more futuristic. I am so thankful, Dr. Vinay Joshi, for being here. We have almost spent an hour together, and this was such a wonderful interaction. I'm so, so happy that all our students have been diligently asking such beautiful questions and also listening to all of us patiently. Thank you, all my warriors. Thank you so much. And thank you, Dr. Vinay Joshi. Thank you, LV Prasad Eye Institute for bringing us such an amazing team of doctors out here for our country. Thanks. Thanks, sir. And I would like to thank Vedantu for this amazing opportunity. Such a beautiful digital learning platform. And I would say these kind of startups and these kind of ventures really motivate us to do more. And I'm really proud, uh, I'm really inspired by the founders who are taking this lead of Vedantu to this level. Fantastic. Really. Bravo and three cheers to you. Keep doing this good work. Thank you for supporting doctors. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Come on, guys, go smash that like button out there to support all the doctors. And if you are new to this channel, do not forget to hit the subscribe button so that you can get all our lectures for free. And you know, I'm going to be always there for all of you in your fight, in your struggle for the competitive examinations. That's it for today from me and from Dr. Vinit Joshi. Bye-bye, all my warriors. Take care. Hasta la vista. See you again on Monday, sharp, 7.30 p.m. Bye-bye. Take care.